What's up guys, Andre here to show off even more about the NES controller on the Nintendo Switch. Because as we showed off in our boxing video earlier, not only does it work with the Nintendo Switch Online app, but it technically works with most any other game. To some degree, as we already showed off in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, where it technically worked, except not really because we couldn't move at all. Due to the lack of a control stick, because Super Smash Bros. Ultimate does not support the D-pad. So the lack of the analog sticks, on top of several missing buttons like X and Y and a pair of shoulders, means that while technically most every game is supported, they're all going to work to varying degrees. So I thought it'd be fun to go through some of the games, some of my favorites for instance, and see what works well and what doesn't. So let's start off with Super Mario Odyssey, which of course is one of my favorite games on Nintendo Switch. Alright, here we are in classic Mario form, which is pretty fitting actually for this video, isn't it? Um, so we can jump, we can jump with both A or B, and that's pretty much it! We can't move because the D-pad doesn't actually control Mario in the game, so jumping is basically all you can do besides activating the camera controls and changing filters. That is it. So unfortunately, Super Mario Odyssey is a bust with the NES controller. So, let's go ahead and move on to another game, one that I think might work a little bit better, being Kirby Star Allies. Uh, specifically the demo, I don't have the full game, but uh, the demo should work just fine in uh, as a proof of concept of whether the NES controller will work or not. Now, Kirby, historically, uh, is a very simple game. It started off on the Game Boy, which had exactly as many buttons as the, as the NES controller did, so it should work pretty well. Um, let's find out, though. We don't know for sure. Alright, so right off the bat, we are already doing way better than we did in Mario, because we can actually move around thanks to the game support of the D-pad. You can also run, uh, you can walk or run by double tapping the control pad in either direction. We can jump, as you can see, uh, we can get hit, <laughs> we can inhale, we can spit, we can do pretty much all the Kirby fundamentals. Uh, let's start grabbing a power real quick, because there is one other thing I want to point out here. Oh, we can also shield as well, thanks to the trigger buttons on top of the NES controller, something the original controller didn't have, of course, on the original NES controller. So once we grab a power here, um, you might think that uh, we'd, we'd be unable to get rid of it, because the game recommends you use Y to draw powers. However, you can also press select to do that as well. So, so far, we have every ability available to us, except for one, which I'll show off here. In fact, the game will show it off to us in just a second. Here it is. To make friends with an enemy that has an ability, press X to throw a heart at it. That's the thing we're missing. Um, we can make friends because there is no X button, and as far as I know, there is no alternative for it. So, um, yeah, that might be a bit of a problem. So, I, as far as I remember, I don't think it was a sense. I don't think it was essential to the game, but it is something to keep in mind. Otherwise, the game is, as, as far as I can tell, entirely playable and feels quite good. Like I said before, this game was made originally, or Kirby started off on the Game Boy and then on the NES, so these kind of controls are old hat to him. <laughs> Alright, let's move on to another game. D.K. Donkey Kong. He's the leader of the bunch. Alright, I'm done. I don't know why I decided to do that. Anyways, as you can see, it's actually working out pretty well so far. We can move, we can jump. Um, however, what we can't do is we can't grab. We also can't roll. So that's a bit of a problem, which means we can't grab these barrels here. Uh, there, we just have, don't have a control option for it. So we're stuck as Donkey Kong without the ability to roll or grab things, which means we're gonna reach some uh, brick, uh, some brick walls in the game uh, because you do need to grab the points. Uh, and while I don't know if you need to roll at, at times, it definitely makes it way easier uh, being able to you know move quickly. So if we go to the control option screen, there's a couple things I want to point out. For one. Um, it's recognized as a pro controller, and that's going to be an important factor coming up in the very near future. Um, and we choose the control options for it. We can't actually change it to, um, to, to actually work for us. We can change the controls, but it actually does us no good, as far as I uh, could tell. Here, let me try grabbing this. Yep, still can't. Can't do anything. So changing the controls did not help us at all, which means uh, this game is only somewhat playable. Actually, here's a great example. I can't grab the ceiling here, which you definitely need to do at points in the game, perhaps even in this level, and we can't do it. So, yeah, Tropical Freeze is only uh, somewhat playable, and only then for certain periods of time. So let's go ahead and move on to another game. Let's try Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee. Because you would think these games would be perf a perfect fit for the NES controller, given the fact that these games require almost no buttons. They, they're based around really, I think, just two button inputs. I mean, you can use a freaking Pokeball to play the game, so surely the NES controller should work, right? Here's the problem! It doesn't! Press a button on the controller you want to use. Well, I'm pressing it. I'm pressing all of them. None of them work. 
Because here's the thing, these games are recognizing the controller as a pro controller, and Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee has no actual support for the pro controller at all. Which means we're flat out of luck, which is a bit of a bummer, because again, like Kirby, this controller would be a perfect fit for the game, seeing as a Pokemon started off on the Game Boy, which had basically the same controller. So that's a bit unfortunate. And speaking of old school style games, how about we give Undertale a try and see if this controller works with a game that was modeled after really classic NES games. Alright, so right away we can move around, and that's really all we can tell we can do right now, but hopefully a battle will start soon and we'll be able to see um, how much we can engage in it. So the Lutzer Dog appears, so we're going to fight him. Uh, almost a direct hit. And we're going to dodge his attacks, <clears throat> and or get hit by it, as it were. So as you can see, this is actually working pretty well so far. Um, let's try get, let's do, let's do Mercy and we'll flee out of here. Hey, we escaped, alright. The only catch is that um, there's no way to access the menu in-game. Now, I don't remember if that's specifically required or not at points. Um, it definitely was useful at points. I don't remember if it was required or not. So if it isn't, then this game, as far as I can tell, should be playable. Um, you're just going to be a little bit limited in what you can do uh, when it comes to the menu. And for the record, start and select don't do anything either. That would be perfect for the menu, but unfortunately it doesn't work, and neither do the shoulder buttons. So let's go ahead and move on to one of my favorite games, being Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Um, this game is something I also tested out back in the day with the, um, on the Wii U with the Classic Controller, the NES Classic Controller, or the SNES Classic Controller, one of the two. Luigi Kart 8! Because you could also use those on the original version of this game on the Wii U, but plugging it into a Wii Remote as a Classic Controller. So let's see if that holds up on, uh, the Switch version. Alright, moment of truth! Here we are in Mount Wario, one of the best courses ever made, of course. <laughs> of course. Let's see how well this works. Oh, I already screwed up the timing. Whatever. So, right away we can accelerate, we can break, and we can do, uh, we can jump, we can do stunts if we're going fast enough. And how about items? We've got full use of items too. Again, thanks to the shoulder buttons that allow us to use items and jump and do stunts. So, this game, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, is a win. This game seems to be fully playable with an NES controller, which is kind of amazing. I kind of love this. Let's see how well I do. I'm pretty good at this game, so I don't think this would be much of an issue. I should mention the fact that obviously we're using the D-pad, when this game was primarily designed to work with a control stick, but as you can see, it's working quite well despite that. Um, I'm, having, I'm not really having any issues at all, so I'm really happy to say that this is feeling quite good. Even with a Wario Kite. Yeah, I'm, I, this is, oh, this is, this is great. This is fun. I'm just, I'm just gonna finish the race out. There's no reason for me to, but I'm gonna do it. Why not? Get out of your blooper. Uh, now, the one thing you may have noticed that I can't do is, that is, look backwards. Um, I can pause it, as you can see, uh, but I can't look behind me. So, yeah. And real quick, just to, uh, just get out of the way, let's try turning tilt controls. Oh, I can't turn tilt controls on, because, um... I don't have access to... I can't even get up there. I don't have a Y. <laughs> but I, I, did check, I did check earlier in another game and even recognize the motion controls. So, yeah. Unsurprisingly, the NES controller does not seem to have motion controls built in. Now, we're almost done here. Oh, I forgot how fun this game is. I just wish I could look behind me, but that's such a minor feature. Otherwise, like I said, this game is entirely playable, which is great, actually, if you're having friends over, you want to do some multiplayer, you don't have enough controllers. Here you go, NES controller, and I think it actually feels better to hold than a, uh, than a normal Joy-Con. Um, it's bigger, it's more comfortable, the D-pad isn't as out of the way as the joystick can be. Granted, it's a D-pad and not a joystick, so that's a downside, but again, it's not really hindering my performance here. As you can see, right there. 
So there you have it, guys. Um, there's a look at the NES controller in various games. As you can see, how well it works depends very much on the game. It's fantastic in Mario Kart Deluxe and Kirby Star Allies for the most part, whereas others you'll run into issues like Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze, or in other games, yeah, you can't even start it, like Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, if you buy one of these yourself, you can check out whether games you know that the controller will work for, or you can try figuring it out for yourself. Because as long as the game supports movement with the D-pad, as well as primary controls being on the A, B, and L and R buttons, you should be good to go. Uh, but yeah, anyways, I'm about done here. So thanks for watching. Of course, stay tuned to Game Explain for lots more on everything Nintendo Switch and everything else Nintendo Switch. <laughs> we'll catch you later. Bye.